Welcome to the first day of February. Gangye Fak Choi, because it's the beginning of the Lunar New Year, as well as the beginning of Black History Month, the shortest month of the year. But still, it's a good thing. And it's X Play Live. A new month of new beginnings. It's new memories. And dear sweet Lord, so, so many games. I'm Adam Sessler. I'm coming to you live from the San Francisco cesspool. And once again, I am joined by my fantastic co-host down in the Southern California, the Black Okage, Frost, and Gerard, the completionist. How are you all doing? We... We don't pay them enough money to do that, so that was a very good surprise. I also just discovered that we're pumping in there. So, you guys sound like you're mic'd over there. Yeah, that's very powerful. I think I just lost <laughs> some hearing. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to kick off Black History Month with an announcement. Yeah? Okay. I wanted to let everybody know that I quit. I'm out. Oh, great. Oh. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> get those Twitch clips, get them out on the couch or off the couch, Get those Twitch Chicago. clips in. See, we knew it. Now's the time, now's the time. How's it going, Adam? Um, uh, good, good. I, uh, yeah, yay. Um, <laughs> it's, it's February, so we have what? Elden Ring, Seafood, Dying Light, Horizon, Horizon, Horizon Pokemon Legends just and came out. Everything else. No yeah. sleep though. No sleep. And then, but then nothing comes out in March. That's what I'm still trying to, you know. Well, we have out. we actually have Kirby in 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 March, so we have. So oh, we it's do? not it's not stopping. Mm. Oh, can we talk about Kirby's feet then in March? <laughs> Maybe let's not let's stay away from the feet. I feel like we we covered that last time. Are feet allowed? If you're talking it's, about it's, fictional yeah, but it's feet, still is in it my allowed? Head. Yeah. I need to talk. They like two croissants. <laughs> Did you guys notice right, that Yoshi well, wears as shoes? Always, <laughs> audience, uh, if you cannot get enough X play, and if you think you've had enough. We need to talk. Uh, <laughs> be sure to check out the G4 TV YouTube page after the show for our latest retro reviews, including Dragon Age Inquisition, Woo! Far Cry Primal, and our producer Abby's convincing case for Fortnite. You heard that right. She just might be able to sell us all on anything. But anyway, uh, today is a very special day here at x -Play. We've got breaking news, like news that is actually broken. Uh, special news, mm -hmm. that's... News that is special. And of course, we are joined by our friends from Yacht Club Games <laughs> for their showcase and presentation. So uh, let's get started. Let's let's speed run the news. Adam is absolutely correct. We have a jam-packed, very special episode of X-Play today. But first of all, welcome to Speed Run the News, your weekly hit of everything in the gaming world that is happening. Now, we've got a lot to cover and only a little bit of time to do so, so let's get started. Our first story is this past Sunday, amidst a wave of disappointed Chiefs, there was one that did emerge victorious, Master Chief. During the American Football Conference Championship game, let's go Rams, Paramount Plus de debuted the latest trailer for their upcoming Halo show. Now, while they won't follow the games to a T, the trailer did provide us with our first look at energy swords, the Covenant aliens, warthogs, and even Cortana herself. Now, before we share our thoughts, we'll toss it to you guys' chat right after the end of this B-roll about how hyped are you guys for this new Halo show? Let us know on the poll on the bottom of your screen. I'm sure we'll have a very diverse opinion selection here. <laughs> I'm sure it won't end up in one category. But now I'm gonna kick it over to TBH as I open the floor because I can see that that dead zone fall over your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I went to over to him, he was like this, he was like. <laughs> and, and listen, listen I, got, I got a resting bitch face. I gotta get over that, okay? It's, but I'm not actually <laughs> mad. <laughs> I'm not actually mad, I just be chilling. Um, the show looked okay to me. There were moments where like, it looked like a very high production and then there were other moments, I was just talking to Lefner behind it, where it looked kind of like sci-fi channel. So it's kind of in the middle to me. Yeah. <laughs> where like I, early, early gala galactic stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, I'm not mad at it because it is a TV show. It's only so much they can do with the budget, but I feel like it might be okay. It's better than what I thought we were gonna get from it. And I'm still not gonna pay for Paramount Plus 
Uh, so if anybody, if anybody in the Twitch chat or the YouTube chat has a password, he needs your login. If I you need want to share it. I, hey, yo, I put it in the yeah. X-Play group chat. Who got the password? Nobody hit me up. So somebody in the chat, I who got it? Paramount Plus is the one service I don't use. Otherwise, I'd give it to you. Who does? Yeah. <laughs> so I need to let everyone know that Meh won, which. <laughs> <laughs> what? That, so that, that was projection. About right. That was projection on yeah. the V, okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Uh, but anyway, anyone else want to you toss in the ring? Well, we got like 30 seconds more I, by I, here. I, I don't think it looked that bad. I, uh, I, I, it didn't look any worse than The Mandalorian or uh, uh, Boba Friends. And uh, <laughs> just, just in terms of... It's just, it's just fun to say. It's just fun. Oh, my friends. <laughs> I guess my but, issue um, is the video game adaptation part, Adam. Like, I agree with you, but yeah. the problem is, is that, like, you're putting very different things in a category of, like, Boba Friends and <laughs> the Halo. Well, the, 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 I, I think that's the thing, is that for whatever reason, the fact that they release the trailer and they come out and say it's not canonical kind of like they're clearly trying to cut something off of the past like there's a fun thing to be done in the world of halo but to adapt the video game as it is into a, 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 a tv show i think would suck it would be pretty boring and I, I i have a little more hope that they have stuff to play with i don't think people will like it because it's a video game adaptation and it's it, it's it's like it's like Tolkien on steroids. Everyone is like, where where's Tom Bombadil? Blah, 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 blah. And it's yeah, uh, but I, I'll, I'll probably watch it and not talk about it with anybody. Uh, yeah, I think uh, through the osmosis of sitting near GB, Golden Boy, Big Halo fan, uh, specifically the <laughs> books as well, which I find very interesting because unlike other video game, a game adaptations like The Witcher, although The Witcher did bastardize Start as a book. those books <laughs> in its iteration of it, I'm actually curious if Halo will maybe follow the novels and not so much the video games and maybe hit like a different demographic there, but I don't know. Was that your scale of excitement from not interested to Golden Boy? Yeah. <laughs> it's That's actually amazing. very That's amazing. amazing. You're, either, you're it. either connected or not at all. That's the kind of what it is. So. Well, it's, 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 it's how I judge video games. It's either Dark Souls or Fortnite. I thought you were like that's, say that's, that's the scale or Golden Boy. <laughs> okay, guys, get ready to start your hype engines. The first 2022 PlayStation State of Play is happening tomorrow, February 2nd, and we'll focus mainly on Gran Turismo 7. Now, rumors have been circulating regarding the state of this upcoming title, so hopefully we'll get some answers soon, aka within 24 hours soon. And of course, chat, what else do you want to see in the State of Play? Uh, or the next, I'm assuming Ragnarok's release date, new exclusive announcements, The Last of Us standalone multiplayer, or anything Ape Escape. Please God, Ape Escape. Now tell us via the poll appearing on your screen now. You know what I'm voting for. To be clear, internet at home, everyone watching this, let's just remember that if tomorrow's event is about Gran Turismo, then chances are tomorrow's event is about Gran Turismo. Because the last time, the last that's, time that's they deep. did this, the last time they did this, I sound like a crazy person, but the last time they said they were doing a state of play, they said they were focusing only on, uh, what was it? Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And everyone was like, where are the other games? And it's like, well, they told us in advance that they're gonna focus specifically on one title. So if we don't see more than, than Gran Turismo, don't be surprised. If we do see more of the Gran Turismo, then yay, we can be surprised. The chat wants to see Ape Escape, so they're at least lined with me. They get it, can, they get it. Can, 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 can we discuss what I think is really important here? They're not apes. I love the franchise. <laughs> He's they are so chimps. serious. He's so Those serious. Those are monkeys. <laughs> at best, they're chimpanzees. They do have but tails. But they are not so apes. They the are not silverback gorillas in the hill country on the border of Rwanda and that other place. <laughs> it's just like, 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 like they're, 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 they're probably monkeys, and so they're not even from the African continent then. Unless it's Madagascar, which isn't part of the continent, but it's an island sitting, you know, uh, off there, and those aren't even monkeys. They're the other ones. This whole conversation uh, is bananas. They're kind of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of GTA 7, though, or, yeah, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo, GTA 7, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It has to slap, because are you guys Forza fans? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not into, big, into sim racers. I just go outside and drive. Even if you don't like sim <laughs> racing, which Forza is more of a sim-cade game, mm -hmm. just, it's okay. No, I'm sorry. 
Why do you have that face? It just stresses me out, TBH. <laughs> it works, that's why. I was just like, fuck! <laughs> I was gonna say, Gran Turismo needs to slap because Forza was so good. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 I got you. That makes sense. What about you, are you a big fan of it? Uh, not really. Um, I, guys, I just, I like retro video games and indie games. I'm the guy that's like, gonna be playing Mario 50 years from now, so. I'm You're boring. A hipster of video games drawer. I'm boring, sorry. But why drive a Lamborghini we get those jump. tortoise shells and stuff? Like, that's more fun than me, car racers. Guys, I, my producer's telling me, please, God, move on. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Sony, you guys knew we were going to talk about it. The game of Acquisitions Conquest. Now, just yesterday, Sony announced their intentions to acquire Bungie for $3.6 billion. Now, as of right now, Bungie is currently working on maintaining Destiny 2, expanding the Destiny franchise, and developing a brand new IP. Now, additionally, Sony has stated that Bungie will remain a multi-platform studio with the option to self-publish and reach players wherever they choose. So, okay, chat, it's your time again. Which studio do you think will be the next in this game of acquisitions? My money's actually on Sega. My money is, however, is on whoever is the Stark family of gaming. Okay. We're working on the prompter, Leffler, come on. But let us know your thoughts in the poll now. So I seen a narrative online that some people were pushing that it felt like this was a panic buy for, um, for Sony because the whole acquisition. Do you just panic buy $3.6 billion? But the, okay, this like, is, but, well, I, oh my God, that's, that's the point I was going to make. Oh my God. That's the point I was going to make. I was like, this, you, you can't move billions of dollars overnight. This is something that they had in the Unless works for Unless you're Microsoft and you it, buy in cash. Okay, okay. It just, hits, <laughs> it just didn't hit the same because of the, the timing was really bad. And that's what happened, I think. But go ahead. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I think it's a mixture of the two. They were clearly, you're absolutely right. You don't just kind of say, I want to buy you two weeks ago and that you closed for 3.6. But I think the discussions were there. But the Activision announcement, this is what I've been hearing, accelerated things. The reason why I think there's mm. credibility to that is Bungie comes out of this smelling like roses. I mean, not only, like, this thing is so overvalued, I just can't get my head wrapped around it. Like, that's not a $3.6 billion company. Even if they have unannounced IP, that's untested. Like, it's just, and, and Destiny 2, in and of itself, just isn't worth that. On top of the fact that somehow they get to self-publish and they retain their own board of directors. I mean, this is like a win-win-win. So, like, complete props to Pete Parsons and everything like that. But this does not sound like a kind of deal with, I mean, Sony is large. Bungie is not as large as Sony. And, wow, Bungie just really looks great coming out of this. Uh, my, my, my best guess is whatever these other projects are, one of them is like the next Fortnite. Like it's like, and, and that's where the multi-platform. I, I, I would definitely look at how they're parsing the words there. Never does the word Xbox get said. Destiny Two will probably live on on the Xbox, but multi-platform. And this is why I go to Fortnite is Android. It's Apple. It's it, you know you know it, it's it's something of that. You know, it, it'll, it'll be that large. Not it's going to be on the Switch and it's going to be on the Xbox. Well. Chat, will we get six more months of insane video game news winter, or is it a calmer video game spring just around the corner? I guess we'll find out tomorrow when we see Gex Mantha's shadow. And yeah, it's exactly how we at X Play do it. Or should we say, Ground Gex Day? Oh, my Lord. Gex Hog Day? It's a no for me. I dog. didn't write this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around because we've got more X Play on the way. <laughs> Nerds, welcome back to X Play. As you probably can tell, all of us are here, huge, huge fans of games and video games. So today on X Play, we have the special honor of being the first to announce the 2022 South by Southwest Gaming Award nominee. And since 2014, South by Southwest has celebrated the wide reach of gaming across areas such as art, design, narrative, gameplay, cultural innovation, and more, culminating in the South by Southwest Gaming Awards that will be held on March 12th, 2022, to help us with this special announcement. One of our producers kindly and really energetically volunteered to help us with this segment. Emily, Gerard. Oh, 
Oh, my Lord. Gerard, would you like to begin? Oh, boy. Uh, sure, yes. Uh, each year at the South by Southwest Gaming Awards, we honor excellence throughout the industry, celebrating the talent that influences the medium of culture of gaming. And the annual awards celebrate the technical, artistic, and design achievements of each year's best titles and their creators. And okay, can we can we stop this? Look, I'm, this is Emily. What is with this? You're like in a beautiful dress. I don't understand what's going on. What is what is this? Well, as a huge fan of awards, award nominations, award looks, award season, and developers getting the recognition they deserve, Woo! I just wanted to bring the ah to the South by Southwest <laughs> Awards. <laughs> Also, uh, y'all, I'm gonna be real honest. I spent a huge chunk of my paycheck on this dress, and like, who knows the next time I'm gonna be able to wear this thing in public? Uh, okay, uh, sure, whatever. Live your best life. Yeah, you, you do you. Do, do you, girl? First up, the nominees for excellence in narrative. This award goes to the game with the best storyline and dialogue, and the nominees are Deathloop, Final, Fan Final Fantasy XIV, Endwalker. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Kana Bridge of Spirits, and Lost in Random. Gerard, the next category. Uh, sure, um, okay. Mm. Excellence in audio design celebrates games <laughs> with the most outstanding and impactful sound effects. The nominees in this category are Forza Horizon 5, Woo! Hell Let Loose, Inscription, <laughs> Woo! Resident Evil Village, and 12 Minutes. You know, guys, uh, Emily wasn't kidding. This is actually kind of kind of fun, you know? What do you mean, Gerard? Oh, I don't know. Like, you know, the awards, the podium. It's kind of like, it makes you want to do it again, you know? I'm ready. All right, here we go. The next award goes to games that push the capabilities of technology and programming furthest or most effectively. Here are the nominees for excellence in technical achievement. Before your eyes. Hell let loose. Forza Horizon 5, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Woo! and Returnal. Excellence in game design goes to titles with the best overall design concept, gameplay mechanics, and execution. For this category, the nominees are Deathloop, Inscription, Loop Hero, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Returnal. That's the power of the awards podium, Gerard. You Don't question it. What? <laughs> you just get glasses for being at okay. the podium? Uh, no, 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 no. You, you totally just put those on his head in, in yours. That, that's not the... Cesar is right. That, we, that's not the podium. We totally just saw you put those glasses on when the camera was away. <laughs> no! You are mistaken. <laughs> no! The Matthew Crump <laughs> Cultural Innovation Award is awarded to the game that best challenges the norm of everyday gaming and offers a culturally innovative view of a game world, character, or gameplay. The nominees are... Before Your Eyes, Chicory, A Colorful Tale, Life is Strange, True Colors, Lost Words, Beyond the Page, and Unpacking. Did you know that in unpacking, one level makes you place your college degree under your significant other's bed and when you move into their apartment? Okay, video games, they're getting a little too, what are you talking about? They're getting too rare. Under the bed. You have to hide it away. The <laughs> next category goes to games with the most well-designed and stunning visuals, including animation effects and graphics. The excellent in animation, art, and visual achievement nominees are Deathloop. XO1, Forza Horizon 5, Kana Bridge of Spirits, and The Wild at Heart. Wow, a truly, collect a truly a collection of incredible nominees so far, from AAA titles to outstanding indies. Cheers to all the nominees. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, just so you know, we, we, we didn't get champagne during the X-Play Awards. Look, Adam, I don't know how to keep telling you that I'm not in control here. It is the power of the awards. The awards podium giveth, and the awards podium taketh away if you don't commit to her bit, okay? <laughs> Carry on, Gerard. Here, here. <laughs> ah! 
Next, the nominees for excellent multiplayer are... Back for Blood, Halo Infinite, It Takes Two, Riders Republic, and Valheim. Okay, now this is probably the toughest category so far in 2021. I mean, it was a killer year for multiplayer, and honestly, I'd like to see. Hey, what are you doing? But TBH, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you, are, you, are you at the podium? Are you holding the super special awards microphone? Do you have a microphone? No, but I thought I'd just give my thoughts on the nominees. Super, super special, special awards, awards microphone. microphone. <laughs> For excellence in original score, the nominees are The Artful Escape, Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker, Kana, Bridge of Spirits, The Medium, and Witchwood. Okay, now, I know for me that the Artful Escape has one of the best blends of classical scoring with those killer guitar riffs. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, the, the way that that game mm -hmm. just really manages. Mm -hmm. Emily? Mm -hmm. Emily? Yes. Oh, well, you know how those, those big award shows, original songs and soundtracks get featured? Uh, that's just my rendition of the score from The Medium. Mm. Oh. Okay, okay. We don't we don't have all day. Can we please just can you just can you guys just you know give us the rest of the All nominees right, fine, fine, fine. Now, for the nominees of Tabletop Game of the Year, these games exemplify overall excellence and ingenuity of any tabletop game in the genre. The nominations are Cascadia, Dune Imperium, Oath, Chronicles of Empire and Exile. Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game. And that time you killed me. The next category is for VR games that exemplify overall excellence in gameplay and design across any VR platform. The nominees for VR game of the year are After the Fall, Demio, Lone Echo 2, Resident Evil 4 VR, and Song in the Smoke. And now, a category that is near and dear to my heart, indie games. Something special you'll note about the South by Southwest Awards is that there are 10 nominees in this category rather than standard five. The nominees for Indie Game of the Year are Chicory, A Colorful Tale, Death's Door, Inscription, Cana Bridge of Spirits, Loop Hero, Lost Words Beyond the Page, The Medium, the Wild at Heart, Unpacking, and Valheim. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> the big one. The one you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Game of the year. Oh, God. Now let's take a second and really reflect. What, what oh, constitutes <laughs> as the best? Is it gameplay? Is it the writing? Is it the art direct design? Is it the score? Please, Can you not just the nominees, just the nominees, please. Just stop. Hey, y'all, I get it, I get it. You wanna get to the good stuff in the stream, the fun conversations, yacht clubs here, the playthroughs, the deep dives, but I'm the producer and I love wearing dresses that I can't wear to the grocery store. No, I wanna stop I you. love awards and I love giving people who make these games the recognition that they deserve, okay? Talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. The nominees for South by Southwest Game of the Year are Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker, It Takes Two, Psychonauts Two, Finally, Ratchet and Clank <laughs> Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. All right, let's hear that final song now. What? Oh, oh yes, here we go. Oh. What? Um, guys, I don't. I don't think I can actually stop her this time. Gaming, everybody loves gaming. No, we gotta, we gotta not do but this. But who is the Give best? The, the best the above the rest. That's for the South Come by Southwest to decide. Let's this. Um, <laughs> that's right, gaming. Da, okay, da, look. Da, da. Each year, the South by Southwest community can vote to help determine the final winners. You can head right now over to South by Southwest today to cast your votes for who should win the South by Southwest Gaming Awards. These polls are open now until midnight Tuesday, February 8th. 
And once again, you can catch the South by Southwest Gaming Awards on March 12th at 7 p.m. Central Time as a part of South by Southwest Online. Congratulations again all to the nominees, and we can't wait to see who wins this year's South by Southwest Gaming Awards. Gaming! And when we come back, Sessler's gonna impose some wisdom that we've all learned in the past week on X-Play. Stay tuned for Sessler 7 right after the break. Dance with me, Gerard, no, please. No, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Why are you doing Dance this? Me, I hate this. Not Welcome back to X-Play. Um, can we just do a quick shout out to clearly X-Play's own Norma Desmond, Emily? All right, now, every so often, I like to sit down and reflect on a busy week of gaming with the Sessler 7. It's like a Seagram 7, but it's with my name. So here's what we learned from the last week of reviews, videos, and live streams. So roll that title card. I love how they give me biceps in that. It just, I feel good about myself for a brief moment. All right, number seven. Being able to pet a freaking bear can't even say Far Cry Primal for mediocrity. Number six. Hopefully Dragon Age 4 is good. Also, let us romance Varric, damn it. Or the producer won't stop asking for it in the prompter. Varric, you know, we want to hump Varric. Number five. Pokemon lore has a lot of messed up things about it, but Mr. Mime shacking up with Ash's mom is somehow the worst one. Now, number four, IGN gave Rainbow Six Extraction a seven out of 10, and you guys said we were too easy on it? Number three, Frost taught us that the best romance option in Stardew Valley is your farm. Love your farm. Number two, we solved the mystery of who killed the prototype franchise, but we're still holding out on the weapon and the location. My money's on the candlestick in the library, Colonel Mustard. And number one, I learned what Chug Splash was against my will, and now I will never be the same. It's like the Kirby feet of life. Now, as some of you may know, we have some special guests with us at the studio today. Yacht Club Games. They are a passionate team with a unique story, and we made a segment to tell you all about it. So check out this spotlight on the team that created The Shoveling Knight. March 2013, the world got the first look at a 2D platformer that would bring joy and a lot of dirt to the genre. It was about a knight who carried a shovel and bounced across levels as if the clouds had parted and blessed him with God's pogo stick. And that was just the Kickstarter video. Shovel Knight was the first game developed by a small upstart called Yacht Club Games, which was neither a club nor headquartered on a yacht. But hang on, we'll get to that in a minute. The small team of developers wanted to make an NES-style game that revolved around one central game mechanic. The character itself started out as a joke conversation over lunchtime deli sandwiches that went way too far. The gameplay mechanic the team was interested in was, wait for it, scooping. Like scooping an enemy onto its back or scooping up dirt to find buried things. But Scoop Knight doesn't have the coolest ring to it, so they went with Shovel Knight. Probably a good idea. Shovel Knight was a love letter to retro titles like Zelda 2, Castlevania, Mega Man, and Dark Souls. Yes, that Dark Souls. But everything from the sprite style art design to the signature boss fights tapped into an ancestral memory shared by every gamer who spent thousands of hours gripping an NES controller. And to complete the free fall into the nostalgia singularity, the insanely catchy chiptune soundtrack by Jake Kaufman is enhanced by contributions from Mega Man composer Manami Matsume herself. The Kickstarter went on to earn four times its original goal amount, clearing every single stretch goal. 
Hang on, we'll get to that in a minute. A year and change later, using Sean's small apartment as the hub for the newly formed Yacht Club games, Shovel Knight launched digitally on the PC, 3DS, and Wii U. The joyful throwback adventure with a sly sense of absurdity would go on to sell millions of copies, conquer every major console, and make over 40 cameo appearances in every corner of the gaming universe, including Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Fall Guys, Brawlhalla, Rivals of Aether, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Ukulele, and in the kids' meal, at Arby's. The last one is my favorite. Ooh, why am I suddenly hungry? but not as hungry as the group of young developers who started this quest in the first place. Long before the curly fries and horsey sauce, the story of Shovel Knight and the formation of Yacht Club Games began at another game company. Way Forward Games is most well known for their Shantae franchise, but they also released a steady stream of mobile titles and licensed games. Where my Thor God of the Thunder DS stands at, huh? But it's amongst those hallowed cubicles that four developers, Sean Velasco, Dave D'Angelo, Ian Flood, and Nick Wozniak embarked on their own quest. They worked together on revivals of A Boy and His Blob and Double Dragon, both with roots in the 2D retro era. The four of them just clicked. A work assignment had brought them together, but they wanted to keep the magic going. They pitched the idea of them staying together as a team within the bigger company, but the request was denied. In a big shop, developers and artists are sent where their skill sets are needed most. If they wanted to stay together, they were going to have to take a much bigger risk. And the risk paid off. Fast forwarding back to the roaring success of Shovel Knight, the positive response was immediate. Reviewers and fans embraced the new franchise. Shovel Knight even went on to win the Best Independent Game category at the Game Awards, which is surprisingly heavy, according to the developers, and does not contain a special hidden chamber with a lock of Jeff Keighley's hair, despite their best efforts to locate one. The number of hours dedicated to that task is not part of this segment, but it was a lot. Shovel Knight also stormed the gates of PlayStation and Xbox, adding console-exclusive encounters with Kratos and the Battletoads which are two characters I never thought I'd utter in the same sentence. And along the way, Shovel Knight released an actual honest-to-God Nintendo handheld console cartridge with an old-school color manual and an amiibo, the first one produced by a third-party company, which eventually were joined by more amiibo. But that success came with strings attached. The Kickstarter had managed to fulfill all of the stretch goals including the really quixotic ones like playable boss nights and a battle mode, which were basically completely new games. After consulting a poster of George Lucas, which I'm assured is true even though I don't believe it, the team set about reframing the idea of DLC and sequels. The original Shovel Knight campaign was given a subtitle to set it apart from what was about to follow. Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, and King of Cards were the three playable boss knights from the Kickstarter, but more than just being playable, they were playable in their own fully conceived campaigns. Plague of Shadows was sort of a new game plus with a new story woven around the first game, while Spectre of Torment and King of Cards were completely new experiences with their own stories, enemies, and gameplay. With the completion of Shovel Knight Showdown, the fighting game they promised, the task started in April of 2013 was finished. It took six years, but that original slate of Kickstarter goals was complete, which maybe next time the team will think a little harder before they write down all bosses in battle mode with three exclamation marks. Yacht Club Games has since expanded into a fully-fledged studio by publishing Cyber Shadow in early 2021. The 2D ninja action adventure was largely developed by just one person, a Finnish indie developer named Mecha Skull, who sounds like someone who would make a game called Cyber Shadow. Yacht Club saw an opportunity and a kinship in both the determined spirit and love of the throwback 8-bit era of gaming and brought Cyber Shadow to market. Yacht Club made a genre left turn with Shovel Knight in their most recent title, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. I was also miniaturized for the X-Play review of that game, and Gerard claims he's still waiting on a part to ship from Amazon before he can return me to my normal size, which I also know is a lie. I know it's a lie, Gerard. You can't keep me in here forever. I can hear you laughing and having fun up there. The Shovel Knight saga has been a mainstay in the 2D market for years and shows no sign of slowing down. But beyond Shovel Knight, Yacht Club is poised to enter a new chapter in their path as an indie developer. The road was long and full of amiibo, but it's just getting started. 
If there's an idea that ties together the Yacht Club outlook, it's that they don't just want to make games that you will love or even that you will buy. They want to make games that make you love gaming, but also that make you want to buy them. Beyond the actual titles they create or publish, Yacht Club Games is a people-first company that only exists because four friends wanted to keep working together. So they came up with a game idea that let them do that. And with any luck, the last nine years are just the beginning. All right, for those wondering, yes, I'm still in Gerard's pocket, and man, this guy has a lint problem. When we come back, I've got to give you more updates about my gaming misadventures as a boy in clown shoes who runs around with a duck or dog and fights clones of Howie Mandel. Yes, God help me, we're talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 next. So don't go away! <laughs> X-Play will be right back. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, yes. It's that time of the show where I recap the waking hell that is Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm just, I am so ready to be done with this. Whew, all right. Well, as we're, as always, we're going to start this off by asking, Adam, where exactly are you in the game? I think I'm right on top of the end. I can't tell because this entire game defies narrative logic. <laughs> like, you know how, like, when you're taught as a kid about beginning, middle, and end? I, I don't know. The, I, this seems to be all middle, and they keep on taunting me with end. Um, okay, I've been to all the Disney worlds, and now I'm in... <sighs> I think I'm in the Grand Teton National Monument. Are you talking about the <laughs> all the um, the key grave, uh, the Keyblade graveyard? Yeah, the all the hoodie boys <laughs> are there. The organization. The redheaded 13. Humbert Humbert is brought Hemline Girl with him. Uh huh. Still uh -huh. disturbs the crap out of me. Uh huh. Um, and I, uh, I have to fight like some of them all together with some of my friends. Uh huh. And our power of friendship is def has defeated them. Uh, they introduced another young hemline girl. Um, I have no clue, like, what's going on. Uh, like, oh, that's right. There was this other part. Oh, my God. This was, like, the worst thing I've ever experienced in the history of things that you can experience. Okay, so um, Water Girl and, and Earth Boy come back. And everyone's like, ah! We can finally, you have the power of wanking now. And and then, like, what? they're doing it. I guess he doesn't wank. And, like, uh, I think Earth Boy dies. And I go to, like, the TLC Waterfalls video. And I'm all, like, kind of watery and, and see-through. And then I have to collect 111 clown shoe boys, who, which is who I am, so that I can go back. Back to the waterfalls video. Just stick to the lakes and the rivers that you're used to, okay? I kept on wanting to scream. And In also, like, don't get AIDS. That's the other thing I learned from that song. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, incredible. And then you go, and then, well, 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 come on. It's, it's not a deep song. Let's okay. say it's, a, it's, a, it's a good song. But, um, uh, Okay, so I get 111 of me, and then suddenly I go back to the game again, and Earth or, or Water Girl are um, they're they're messing around with um, Howie Mandel, evil Howie Mandel. Oh, but then this other guy showed up, who's the opposite of Howie Mandel. He's a really nice guy, so he's maybe like a Sean Connery when women aren't around, something like that. Adam, the, it's not. I mean, the game's confusing. But I just, I, it's, 
it starts out like weird Final Fantasy stuff, and then it has its own Disney arcs in each level, and then it ends with weird Final Fantasy stuff. That's like, that's the sandwich of Kingdom Hearts. Okay, but th here's the thing. I haven't played a lot of Final Fantasy, but like, is that really like what Final Fantasy is like Listen, at the end of the game? Listen, everything was great until you got into 8, and then you're like, spoiler alert, guys, but I feel like you've had enough time with Final Fantasy 8 that if this really upsets you, I don't know. Let's just play it safe. <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII takes a weird turn. It takes okay, okay. Here's the thing. Where's Cloud? I thought Cloud was in this game. That's that's the one Final Fantasy character I know, except for the one that dies and everyone cries about him. But I always forget to pronounce his name. Let's. Uh, so where's Cloud? <laughs> Where, where's Cloud? Um, I have redheaded Humbert Humbert, but there's no Cloud. Yeah. So there are no Final Fantasy characters that they're, they're that own, really end up in neat characters. Yeah. There's Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, kind of bypasses the would-be Final Fantasy characters that usually show up in the previous games. Uh, so there is no Cloud in Kingdom Hearts 3, so you didn't miss him, Adam. Like, Squall's name is Leon, and he's in a so, relationship like, with Yuffie. And so the fact that, as a young person, I played Air Guys, actually reviewed it God for GameSpot TV. God bless the ring. Let's go. Like, it's a great game. I love that game. So, like, none of that sacrifice has, like, I'm not getting any payback in absolutely, Kingdom Hearts 3 from Absolutely that. not, Adam. Absolutely not. Okay, Adam, back on track. The battle system, though. So never mind the story, but you've now kind of reached the end game where theoretically everything's been unlocked for you. You can, you can do all your flips. You've got, you're equipping your different keyblades. You've got your magic and your quick menus and your summons. Like, how do you like it? If I see... That goddamn pirate ship one more time. <laughs> Swinging it back and forth and back. Or the, I mean, at, at least with the merry-go-round, you can skip the opening animation. But my God, it's just, it's like, oh. oh I mean, it almost makes me tolerant of, of Goofy, who I still can't, I still can't figure out when we decided that Goofy is just, you know, Forrest Gump, who took a hammer to the head a hundred times. It's just, it's, 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 it's like, I don't, I just don't get it. Anyway, I, I, yeah. <sighs> hey, Corey, why when is you evil Howie from? Mandel gonna so, die? I, I just, just like, like he keeps on. I just like to say on Black History Month, I think it's amazing that you referenced TLC in the middle of a, a Kingdom Hearts conversation. I just want to give him kudos for that. Like, you you got to go see it. We're not going to slide past that. <laughs> but All I got to right. ask you this. Uh, on a scale of Last Airbender, the 2010 movie, to the Black Widow movie, how unnecessary are the gummy ship uh, missions, Adam? Okay, the Last Airbender, and that's not a fart joke. <laughs> no, that's no, no. That is a M Night Shyamalan right. adaptation. I mean, Adam, the movie was a fart. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, and, and, and this isn't Avatar, as in James Cameron's Fern Gully, right? No. no, this is like a little kid, and he's an Airbender, and he goes on a mission to all the <laughs> what other is elements. an Airbender? <laughs> he, he, he controls the element of air. He's Caillou at Powers. He, he has like a little. <laughs> <laughs> then why not just call him Windy or something like that? Why the last airbender? His name's Andy. Well, there's this whole thing in the Fire Nation attack. They slaughtered his family, you know. But he, that's how he ended up as Caillou. He's a team with some waterbenders. Someone should have called him Windy. Um, so I don't know which is worse of the two, but um, those. Okay, unnecessary doesn't even get close to that gummy ship thing, especially now that I realize that like I don't even have to do those boss battles. If you just go the long way, it's kind of like sneaking back into your house like past curfew and you just, you know, it, it's just you just avoid all the combat and it's really boring, but at least it's not stupid. Yeah, it's completely unnecessary. Well, Adam, that's actually kind of perfect because now that you've managed to get this far in the game, you why know, is that perfect? Oh, because we had a pop quiz, buddy. You ready? He's what? definitely gonna fail. This. You ready? Oh yeah, I got I got questions for you. You ready? Great. Let's do this. <laughs> Adam, first question: Who are the two wizards seen playing chess at the start of Kingdom Hearts Three? Okay. Um, 
That's an easy one. One of them's a young version of evil Howie Mandel. And the other one is, I think, the young version of Pleasant Sean Connery. Um, well, you right? know what? You're, you're not that far up. You're technically wrong because it's Master Eriquas and Xehanort. Mm. Xehanort. Yeah. You can usually just like guess Zeno answer, fart. though. Next question. I'm not, I'm I, mean, I, I, just, I mean, I kind of figured out. Okay, can I just tell you something? Like, metaphorically, having, like, the good guy and the bad guy playing chess, like... Uh, it's like I need to beat someone to death with a copy of the Seventh Seal. Like that's so obnoxious. Well, I got another question for you, Adam. What's the name of the game you see a trailer for at the beginning of the Toy Story World? Oh, aren't they making a game out of that? Um, Valium or something like that. Uh, that was uh, velour. <laughs> You're, so You're not that so, far off. Yeah. It begins with a V. It's like what X is to all those jackasses. Uh, uh, what is it? You're close. It's, it's actually Verum. That's not a word. Okay, this one's easy, Adam. Name two of the Kingdom Hearts sequels. <laughs> you have like a million to pick from. Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh-huh. I'll take it. mm 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 mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Kingdom Heart 2, The Specialing? <laughs> Kingdom Heart Friends? The Power of Friendship? Chain of Memories, uh, compels really good you. Job! The Power of Friendship <laughs> compels you. <laughs> All right. All right, Adam. <laughs> All right, look. Adam. We're going to kind of abandon the questions now. I, I, I want to ask you one thing, Adam. <laughs> This is a, a simple That's question. It's a question, Gerard. It's simple. It's simple. <laughs> it's not a you need to know anything about the game question, okay? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Did you have any fun playing this game? Any? He's thinking way too hard. Come on, the combat's fun. You just slap and that, that sound when it hits the little heartless or the nobodies. You know what I can say is during because uh, they're like um, in between once you finally leave the Disney lands, um, there's like 30 minutes of cutscene before you go to the TLC video, and I read the entire science section of the New York Times, and I real I learned some things. Um, there uh, 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 crabs from the Plesius Stone or like early crabs, I guess had really big eyes, We're which not is interesting about because the crabs that we have now don't have big crabs, eyes, probably. and they're really, they really can't see well at all. Adam. Did you know that? Adam, I asked you if you had fun. Oh, I mean, I love learning about the crabs. I'm talking about, did you have any fun while playing Kingdom Hearts 3? Yes. The m moments where I was not engaged with the game were really, really satisfying. You heard it here first, folks. Adam Sessler had yeah. fun playing Kingdom Hearts 3. Yay! And crabs once had big <laughs> eyes. Yay! All right, I got one more question for you, Adam. You ready? I don't know if I Okay. Am. Here we go. Name one, one, one person from Organization 13 that's not the red-headed guy. He can't even name the red-headed guy. Wait, he was in Organization 13? Oh, my Jesus. Then why is he acting all mopey with the preteen? I thought he was a good guy. It's called fan service, Adam. These games you are mean built Axel on fan or service. Lee, yes, Axel, as he, he did. likes to he also be called. He did it. And he has the, and he has the, and he has the. He did it. Like, there's the blue-haired guy. You have, like, like Sonic's bastard child is like, well, if you had the tattoos under the eye, you could be like I'm, me. And we're having ice cream on top of the bell I'm tower more, I'm with so the impressed. Adam. What? I'm very impressed with you. Thank you for your answer. Wait, can I, you name oh, another one? Wait, I answered one? something? You did. Don't push it. Don't well, push it across. Well, there's Xenofart. That counts. That's close. <laughs> Hold on a second. I think. That counts. Adam, I think, I think I'm being- Hold on, let me go hump my boggle. I can figure out another one of these characters' names. What's yeah, go for it. X in it. What, name another character, Adam. Z Z Z Xanax? <laughs> Xanax. He definitely Xanax. talking like he off one right Xanax. now. Oh, my Lord. 
<laughs> I'm trying to think of other X words. What, what's Sora's friends' names? Oh, like that really annoying one? They're Who's the one that hangs out with Mickey? <laughs> and like he like he like paces his his purple hair down. He's talking about Riku. And they're like they're they're looking for Water Girl. Um, Kyrie. He's so annoying. <laughs> Aqua. Oh, the one with the yeah. the no, one that looks like female yeah, oh, Riku. Yeah, Aqua's also Aqua is like she's got an attitude. I just gotta say, <laughs> like she's like, oh, you left me here for so long. I'm angry, and you're like, oh no, it's all gonna fall apart. The power of friendship no longer there, and I'm like, I don't care. Where's Howie Mandel? <laughs> Incredible, Adam. From the bottom of my heart, I am so happy that you have gotten to the end of this game. I'm assuming that you're going to be doing some type of X-Play review in the near future. Well, I, I, I got to get through this, this boss battle. Apparently, you know, it's probably epic, like Beowulf. Um, and then Just I'll, I'll, I'll pass judgment. <laughs> it's, it's exactly like Beowulf. <laughs> Except there's no Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot that movie was made. <laughs> And they, they did it like that it? Tom Hanks movie where he's the creepy guy on the train celebrating Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah, the Polar Express. Is that Express. same, like, stupid style? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Polar Express. We just That's call it, it creepy. Uh, Adam, yeah, Adam yeah. I believe uh, I'm being told by the producers that it is time for us to wrap up this segment. Uh, it has gone on. Oh, thank up. God. Yeah. So uh, uh, coming up next... We have more from Yacht Club Games, so stay tuned. We have some reveals. You don't want to miss it. The Yacht Club Games present is happening next. Don't go anywhere. Don't do it. Welcome back to X-Play. This is the moment we've been teasing all show. This year's Yacht Club Games presents an official update from Yacht Club Games, including a brand new, huge, world premiere exclusive announcement presented by X-Play. Turn down the lights, grab your Shovel Knight plushies and Amiibos, because here we go. Hello, I'm Sean Velasco, designer at Yacht Club Games. We're an independent game developer based in Los Angeles, California. Back in 2013, we got our start when we launched a Kickstarter campaign for Shovel Knight, our groundbreaking debut title that fused modern gameplay with retro sensibilities. Shovel Knight was a big hit, and since then we've been creating more adventures in the Shovel Knight series. Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, King of Cards, and the multiplayer battler Shovel Knight Showdown. As Yacht Club Games grew, we ventured into publishing. Our most recent release was 2021 Cyber Shadow, a ninja action platformer created by Mechanical Head Games. We've also been working with our talented developer friends to co-develop innovative new titles like the recently released Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, as well as the upcoming platforming adventure, Shovel Knight Dig. We'd like to say thank you to our legions of fans and friends. Your support is what allows us to live our dreams, and we will never forget that. Today, we have a lot of cool news to share with you. We'll be focusing on a selection of games that have brand new content currently in development. We have quite a few things to cover, so let's get started. Pocketeers, my name is Celia Schilling. I'm the marketing manager at Yacht Club Games. As you may know, our roguelike puzzler, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, was released on December 13th for Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC. We're only a month into release and already we are blown away by the glowing reception. Players everywhere are battling one another, mastering all the characters, and solving the Pocket Dungeon's many mysteries. A lot of creativity and hard work went into this game's three-year development so far but we're just getting started. We have a few announcements for Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. This free update will add new accessibility options, bug fixes, and quality of life improvements. For instance, 
You can now control how much the board fills up when you fall in battle. Also, many objects have been given new descriptive text. Almost every object in the game has also been given a portrait, even this puddle of lava. It will also include a new playable character, Random Knight. This mysterious combatant will appear in camp after you've already recruited a few knights. When you start a new adventure with Random Knight, he will randomly become one of your unlocked characters. Random Knight is a great way to show off your knowledge of the whole Pocket Dungeon cast. This free update will be available soon. Next, we'd like to pull back the development curtain on our expansive slate of downloadable content that will be available in three DLC packs. The team has been hard at work developing online compatibility for Versus Mode. That's right, soon you'll be able to go head-to-head -head with your friends and other puzzlers around the world. There's plans for a matchmaking and ranking system, so you'll be able to find players of your skill level and prove your puzzle prowess to everyone. We're also tinkering with mod support features for the PC version of the game. With mod support, Intrepid players will be able to add their own content to the game. We look forward to delving into your own original creations in the near future. Many other elements are still in early development, but we're planning on releasing new playable characters, enemies and bosses, relics and items, hidden secrets, and much, much more. We'll be revealing more details about everything mentioned at a later date, so please hang tight, puzzlers. Hi, I'm Sandy Gordon. I'm an artist at Yacht Club Games. We're working alongside Nitrome on the brand new platforming adventure, Shovel Knight Dig. Today, we're thrilled to share more details about the game. In Shovel Knight Dig, you embark on your quest after the evil Drill Knight and his dastardly digging crew, the Hexcavators, blast apart your peaceful campsite and steal your loot. As you tunnel after him in chase, you'll collect gems and golden gear bits, procure powerful weapons, and take down foes both familiar and new. Stages are procedurally generated, so make sure to keep your wit as sharp as your shovel. You'll need to jump, slash, and dig your way through an ever-changing chasm of mystery. Your unlocked items carry over after you fall in battle, so grab as much treasure as possible and stock up on supplies before you start a new run. As you dig deeper, you'll discover that there's much more to this heist than it appears on the surface. At the end of each level, you'll encounter one of the nefarious excavators blocking your path. Today, we wanted to highlight the crafty collector, Scrap Knight, as overseer of the magic landfill. Scrap Knight scrounges for worthy valuables and keeps the truly special stuff slung over her shoulder in an enormous bag. Does she look familiar? You might have spotted Scrap Knight as a playable character in Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Though she appeared in that game first, she was actually created for Shovel Knight Dig. Next, we'd like to present to you another new area you'll discover as you descend into the earth. Welcome to the bug-infested depths of the Grub Pit. Even if you're just passing through, these creepy crawlies don't take too kindly to intruders. Make haste while digging through the carnivorous dirt. It will retaliate by releasing its deadly spikes. Other foes, like the rolling beetle, will roll toward you with giant balls of something. Yuck! Use your shovel drop to stay above the fray. When you reach the bottom of the nest, you'll encounter another member of the Hexcavators. A certain bug-loving spelunker, perhaps? Though we needed a little more development time than we initially anticipated, we're excited to announce that the game is in the final stages of development and nearing completion. We look forward to sharing Shovel Knight's next adventure with you. I'm Nick Wozniak, but most people call me Woz, and I'm an artist at Yacht Club Games. We can't believe it's already been a year since Cyber Shadow released. It seems like just yesterday when fans were descending into Mecha City and battling Dr. Progen for the first time. Cyber Shadow was developed as a love letter to action games of a classic era, 
and it's been awesome to see players connecting with the game, finding all the secrets, and rising to its toughest challenges. If you haven't played Cyber Shadow, now is the perfect time to embark on your epic ninja adventure. Because for a limited time, Cyber Shadow will be 30% off on all participating platforms. Also, we're happy to announce that we are releasing Cyber Shadow's pulse-pounding soundtrack by the very talented composer Enrique Martin. It is available digitally on Bandcamp starting today and will be coming to streaming services soon. Thanks, Waz. I can't wait to listen to that sweet soundtrack on repeat. Over two years ago, on our last Yacht Club Games Presents, we announced that we were working on new internal projects. Well, time flies, and we finally have something to share with you. Enjoy the presentation. I'm Alec Faulkner, designer at Yacht Club Games and director of Mina the Hollower. We're so excited to finally reveal this brand new project. Mina the Hollower is a bone-chilling action adventure featuring classic gameplay and an 8-bit aesthetic in the style of the Game Boy Color, but refined for the modern era. The game combines smooth 60 frames per second action combat, a world full of mystery and horror, and top-down adventuring. As you might expect from the next original title from our studio, Mina the Hollower is a celebration of games both old and new. You play as Mina, a whip-wielding hollower and visionary inventor. She receives a troubling letter from Baron Lionel, her longtime patron and the overseer of Tenebrous Isle. Mina's advances in spark technology brought power to the island for the first time many years ago, but now the spark generators have gone dark and foul play is suspected. You'll use a myriad of weapons and oddball trinkets to vanquish the monsters thwarting Mina's objective. And along the way, you'll unearth the secret horrors of Tenebrous Isle. You won't want to miss this harrowing, yet heartwarming tale. Mina the Hollower is currently in the thick of production, and ideas are still taking form. We want your feedback, collaboration, and support in making Mina the Hollower the best game it can possibly be. That's why we're returning to our roots and kicking off Mina the Hollower's development as a Kickstarter campaign. For those of you who don't know, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform that allows communities to fund creators and bring their visions to life. By backing our campaign, you can secure a copy of the game when it releases and even get in on the development process yourself. We've also partnered with Fangamer to create exclusive backer rewards, including a physical soundtrack, enamel pins, an art book, and even an adorable plush. Though we're financing a majority of the project ourselves, we hope we can create a more expansive game this way. More importantly, we want to build a community around Kickstarter, much like we did with Shovel Knight. We also want to share a development process more than ever before. So join us for backer-exclusive development live streams, help us flesh out Mina's adventure by contributing your ideas for enemies, NPCs, and boss designs, and learn about how we make games and join us on the journey. The Kickstarter is officially live right now. You can read more about the game and the campaign at minathehollower.com. Thank you so much for watching, and stick around because the party is going to continue alongside our hosts at G4 with an early preview of gameplay from Mina the Hollower. Thank you, Alec, that was awesome. As a massive fan of Shovel Knight and all of the amazing work being done by the Yacht Club Games team, I am so incredibly pumped 
for Mina the Hollower. And right after the break, we're gonna be talking to some of the folks creating this new game, and we'll have the first ever world premiere gameplay demo of this brand new title right here on X-Play. We'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. As promised, we have two of the incredible developers behind Mina the Hollower, the new title from Yacht Club Games. I am joined today by Alec Faulkner and Sandy Gordon. Uh, guys, welcome to the show. This is so exciting. I'm so happy for you guys. I, I've known about this project for a while, I did, but you guys, I'm, I'm friends with you guys. Full disclosure, I have no financial stake or investment. No one at G4 has a financial gain in Mean of the Hollower, anything Yacht Club related. I just love you guys so much. You're my brothers in arms in so many ways. Even though I know you guys, you have kept this from me on purpose. <laughs> you, you would not let me we know anything you to be about, this. about right. it. On the couch. <laughs> yeah. so this, this is my first time seeing gameplay in real time. I've obviously gotten to see the trailer at like everyone else. Uh, but thank you again for joining us and for letting us be the world premiere debut of the demo of Mina the Hollow World. We wouldn't have it any other way. Like uh, <laughs> sharing this with you on the couch here at G4 is, is honestly like, it's a dream for us too. And we're incredibly excited to be here talking about Mina the Hollow World. We haven't- oh gosh, Finally. <laughs> finally, we've been working in a bubble for so long. It's been like <laughs> nearing two years of you know development. Uh, the first year was you know a lot slower because Obviously, obvious things happened in the world affecting everybody, but. Thank you, by the way, to all of our fans for being patient as ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be asking you guys some questions, but for you guys at home, later in the show, we're gonna give you guys a chance to ask your own questions. So to prep those up as we're going along, type exclamation point Q in the chat and then your question. With that said, guys, are you ready to jump in? Let's dive in. Let's dude. play Mina the Hollower. I'm so ready. Got a little <laughs> intro cinematic here for you. We really tried to take it up a notch this time when the game starts. So we're out of medieval times and into late 1800s Victorian Gothic. Oh my yeah. God, I'm getting chills. <laughs> what is this? So much like uh, we do with our gameplay, we really wanted to take inspiration from uh, you know, classic, rather than classic games, uh, well, in addition to classic games, rather, we're taking inspiration from classic literature, gothic horror in particular. A lot of our favorites like Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Sleepy Hollow, uh, we're trying to draw as much inspiration from the themes and concepts from those uh, classic works as we can and spin them into our own sort of new brand of macabre uh, gothic themes. You guys have been playing a lot of Bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> Too much Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know. You guys are in that Bloodborne zone. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, just like anything uh, we make, we like taking something old and trying to make it new again. Yes, and make so it we saw own. a lot of fertile ground there for fun experimentation. I think we also just had a lot of fun making Spectre of Torment, and we got bit by the spooky bug. So I know it's not October yet, but this is me all year round. <laughs> Hopefully everyone will play this on Halloween. This is, this is crazy. I mean... The aesthetic from what we've seen so far is supposed to be Game Boy Color. This is, this is like you rolled on the red carpet for the Game Boy Color. Like the, obviously the Game Boy Color can't do stuff like this, but look at this. <laughs> Already out the gate, I immediately identified that I would have played this game when I was a kid on a color for sure. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm really like relieved to hear that you feel that way and that the the Game Boy Color aesthetic was immediately noticeable because that's something that we've really tried to hit home. Uh, we've paid very close attention to detail and making sure that the sprites, uh, you know, while this game can't actually play on Game Boy Color hardware, the sprites and the tile sets do follow Game Boy Color uh, art restrictions. You say that, but you know some person's gonna figure out how to port this game to the Game Boy Color. <laughs> I you mean, know it. Have at it. Uh, if they can, you know, more power to you. That'd be great. We'd love to see That's it. That's gonna take some real wizardry. We can't figure that out. <laughs> so immediately I have to ask you guys the, the dumb, questions that everyone's going to ask you three years from now or whenever this game comes out and you're at the, your PAX boots Lay and everyone's asking you. Uh, uh, what was your inspiration going into this? What, what, what really drove you guys to go in? Obviously, we've got Castlevania, a little bit of Mega Man, a lot of Game Boy Color aesthetics. Yeah. Link's Awakening for sure is for baked sure, into this. Yeah. Obviously, Bloodborne. But how do you guys start something like this? This is such a specific thing that you guys are committed to. 
I mean, there's so many reasons, right? It all kind of just coalesced and ended up making sense. But yeah. we were, you know, we we're thinking about Yacht Club being a game or a, a company that's kind of existed in the 80s, right? And it's like, well, we've been around for a little while. Maybe we're in the 90s now. And yeah. we're getting, you know, a little sick of making an NES game. Time to move forward and try something else. Yeah. I mean, portable consoles in general have just always been near and dear to our hearts. Um, we just kind of wanted to, you know, just like Sh uh, Shovel Knight was a love letter to NES games, this is our love letter to Game Boy games and handheld uh, in general. But I love that because there's not a lot of, I've never seen someone do something like this in the essence of like doing a Game Boy Color. It's like, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna make a game for the end gauge. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right. Just do that super <laughs> well and everyone's gonna go, I never had an end gauge. But this is obviously way different. This is specifically the color aesthetic and palette of a yeah. Game Boy Color. Yeah, I mean, the palette itself is custom. Uh, we tried to pull from a lot of our favorite games. So as I mentioned, we're going for a bit of a darker tone than Shovel Knight was, say, uh, for, the, for Mina the Hollower. And uh, in, in trying to do that, uh, we made sure that the palette kind of reflected that, that feel and, and can pr help provide a spooky atmosphere. Uh, we, uh, uh, in addition to Link's Awakening, so Link's Awakening is a big inspiration for the sprites and the characters uh, in the way that they're kind of saturated in vibrant colors. But for the environments in the backgrounds, I'm kind of geeking out here because this is like my <laughs> my area. Uh, I worked a lot on the Sandy's working on this uh, two days ago. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, we, I, I, we drew, drew a lot of inspiration from games like uh, Dragon Quest III, Dragon Quest Monsters on Game Boy Color, which had a lot more texture in the backgrounds than say Link's Awakening's more geometric, abstract tile art. Um, so uh, trying to add a lot of detail and kind of ground the environments in not a real world per se, but like a more realistic world was yeah. really important to us. So there's so much going on and we obviously yeah. only have so much time. <laughs> I suppose you. we should talk about some of these mechanics. Right, so right. So, so <laughs> tell me, so obviously you've got, a, okay, you have a burrowing mechanic. Uh, you've got some kind of whip. Is, is it a whip? Is it a like the a, night star? A, the night star. The night star. <laughs> yeah. So, like any Game Boy game, it's mainly focused on having two primary actions: um, an attack button and a burrow button. An A button and a B button. Yeah. Um, so, if you attack, then you'll do this long wind-up whip attack with a lot of range, but with a lot of vulnerability. Um, we're leaning into you know having challenging combat in this game, and so getting all of that really, really shining has been super important for us. And if you hold the other button, you can tap it to jump over small pits or obstacles or enemies. But if you hold it, you'll dive into the ground, and you can use that for all sorts of stuff. Uh, like any primary mechanic, uh, you're gonna you're gonna become very intimately familiar with burrowing in Mina the Hollow. <laughs> it the burrowing look it's it's so simple, but it looks so fun because of the speed. I can't wait to see speed run of yeah. people just staying in burrowed form throughout major <laughs> and, and skipping tiles. Like this I, I can't wait for you to get your hands on it too. Oh. It's got a lot of really fun nuance and momentum. And uh, we, you know, like all of our games, we spend a lot of time getting the control yeah. just correct. Finessing all of that <laughs> fine sheen. That, yeah. That's that's one thing I love about your guys' kind of, I mean, I don't know if it's your mission statement, but it's, it's what I interpret from you guys as developers is you guys try your best to really hone in on making the experience of playing the game outside of the story, outside of the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. The gameplay has to be good and fun for anyone. And yeah. I think that's something you guys nail almost in every game you do. What, what are some of the challenges kind of going into this with, with a game like this? You know, obviously there's nothing like this game, so mm -hmm. you have to kind of <laughs> use your inspirations to create something brand new, right? That was, it's a great point. That was definitely a huge challenge. It's inventing yes. something new, kind of. I mean, we start with a solid base of like, well, we know we want, uh, we want platforming, we want combat, we want secrets, we want exploration. Um, and then you throw all that in there, you throw all those ingredients into a big soup and then you taste it and you're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta figure out how this is actually gonna <laughs> We work. gotta balance the soup a little bit. <laughs> hey, so yeah. what's going on here? What, okay, what, so- A level up le system. I'm immediately going, this is giving me Zelda 2 vibes. Hard Zelda 2 <laughs> vibes. Hard Zelda 2 <laughs> vibes. Yes, we're huge Zelda 2 fans too, so. as was obvious in Shovel Knight. But yeah, this is our opportunity to bring more RPG elements into our games. Um, we added a leveling system, which we're really excited about. This is, this, I, God, I cannot wait to play this. Um, something I wanted to ask you guys is, I know, similar to like how Valve does their business, Valve is the kind of company that 
You know, they wrote in their handbook that employees are allowed to just grab their desk and gravitate towards each other and work on any project. That's, <laughs> right. that's their game design philosophy. Yeah. And while you guys are very far from that, <laughs> uh, you guys don't really have a hierarchy of, of who's in charge of what at Yacht Club. You guys are very much, everyone's kind of in the same playing field. You obviously have your expertises uh, across the medium, but you guys are very much willing to listen to each other and focus on who has the better idea or the vision. How, how did pitching Mean to the Hollower come to fruition? Um, I think we just thought about our strengths a lot, and we thought really hard about what kind of game you know we can make, what kind of game we want to make, and what kind of game we think our fans would love to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did a poll a little while ago. A little while ago, like That's four or right, five years, years ago. ago. <laughs> a little while ago in COVID terms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially saying, hey, like, what do you guys think we should make next? Like, some kind of Metroid, some kind of Zelda game. Uh, you know, there were some oddball choices in there, too. Like a, a land soccer, a pinball game. <laughs> <laughs> we probably, we'd be excited to do yeah. any of those. Surprise, surprise. A lot of people wanted us to uh, tip our hat towards making a game like this. A big, uh, bigger scope, but uh, still contained kind of uh, exploration focused top down game. Yeah. Yeah. So here it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and to touch more on your point too, Gerard, uh, you know, uh, this, this game has the DNA of every Yacht Club team member woven into it. I mean, uh, it wouldn't be the same without everyone's involvement. You know, uh, we have huge group, group meetings where everybody's able to pitch ideas and give feedback on what they think feels good or what they'd like to actually see in the game. Um, so this is really just, you know, a, a Big team effort uh, from all of us. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't want to call it out, but I feel like I know you guys so well that I can be like, Sandy did that, Morgan did that, <laughs> Waz did that. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Totally. So I I love the fact that Mina the Hollower refuses to open the chest and just proceeds <laughs> to beat it. Bash it, bash yeah. it open, just yeah. Like it's, and you know what, admittedly, that's way more exciting than opening a chest. You don't want to sit through a cutscene of someone like holding up the item, right? You just want to pick it up, get <laughs> yeah. your loot, and get I out of there. I need this. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. When we start designing something like that, it's like, well, can you open the chest from all sides? Is it only one side? How long does it take to like open the chest? You got to watch animation. How about none of that? How about you just whip it open and it explodes? <laughs> I, I I hate to use the word souls-like, but I I love that the combat we just saw was you just playing Dark Souls in the way of like <laughs> observing the enemy, reading them, dodging, diving, reacting, getting the move that you want and moving on. Uh, I, I love, it was just so fun to see you do that. I think, I think at this point our brains just are like, you know, Miyazaki and his, you know, crazy ideas and, and all the Souls games. <laughs> They're just like, uh, you know, floating around in there at all times. We're just huge fans of the Soulsborne series. I feel like every time I talk to you, Sandy, you're like, yeah, just do Bloodborne again for the 19th time. I'm, like every time you're playing that's Bloodborne. That's all I play. I, <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's gonna, it's gonna come out and, and everything I touch at some point. So we, we have to give the love and respect to Jake Kaufman, brilliant composer, madman, genius. Yeah, Jake uh, I've worked with him on Big Bad Bosses. You guys have obviously worked with him over the years on so many different projects. Uh, I don't know how he does it for how, how crazy he is, but how, how does he outdo himself again? Like the the it's not even a pressure <laughs> thing. It's just Jake exists Dude, I don't and know. he doesn't. I don't, don't know either. <laughs> Jake's worked on, on so many games over the years, so many iconic games with iconic soundtracks that the fact that he's able to create something fresh and this exciting and bombastic every time is just mind blowing. Okay, so we're going to Secrets. You're exploring, you're jumping <laughs> around, which, which I so love. This is what I dig so much from Shovel Knight, no pun intended. Um, how, how important was it for you guys to kind of incorporate some of the foundations of what you learned from Shovel Knight in terms of curiosity, exploration, things of that nature? I mean, I think it's just sort of inevitable, you know? Like, as we make games and as we continue going on this journey, we learn so many lessons that uh, we feel the need to put to use, right? Um, this game has like a lot of equipable items and trinkets, right? And when we were making the Custom Knight Amiibo functionality for Shovel Knight, we cut our teeth on, you know, making a wide array of items. When we were working on, let's say, like the world map of King of Cards, right? We got a little taste of like making a more open-ended game structurally. Yeah. So it all kind of just, I don't know, it all, it all comes to fruition in its own magical and beautiful way and to make something totally unique. So we're about to go into a dungeon, right? What, what is the setting right now? Yeah, so we just made our way through Crypt Road, which leads to the first, uh, one of the early game areas uh, called the Crypt. 
Well, before we dive into the crypt and learn more about the lore and the world of Me of the Hollower, we have to take a break. <laughs> uh, but before we take a break, a quick reminder, Me of the Hollower right now is on Kickstarter. If you go to meofthehollower.com or just go to Kickstarter and search for it, it's right there. Uh, we're going to talk more about the Kickstarter in a little bit. Uh, but when we come back, uh, we're going to have another part two exploration of the demo. We might have a friend joining us to talk more about the game and explore more. And hey, if you want to ask the devs a question, please, please, please type exclamation point Q and you can get your questions answered, hopefully, towards the end of the show. So with that said, we're going to take a quick break. Enjoy Gex. Don't go anywhere. Me and the Holler will be right back. Yeah. Crazy. Ow! Ow! Welcome back to X Play. Before the break, we got a sneak peek at the demo for Mean of the Hollow, where the brand new game coming from Yacht Club Games. We have more of that coming up right now. And joining us to go on this dungeon crawling uh, adventure is Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps. Aaron, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the exact same day that previous segment was on. Oh, no problem. Really we totally didn't pre-tape it. No problem. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I'm very stoked about this, and I'm very honored to be sitting next to these two very talented people. I mean, you're talented as well. No, oh, thank you. I was just, it was all about them today. Uh, likewise, this, this, likewise. This game's amazing. Can I swear? No. Right. You can swear. Oh, cool. Yeah, just not, not like three times in a row, but otherwise you're okay, good. Okay, cool. There's a limit. There is yeah. a limit. Yeah, the sensors on the FTC are like going to like... Try to keep up with us. Okay, I'll put yeah. like I'll put like a little orange tip on my yeah. swear gun. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm really excited for you, Aaron, to be here today, specifically because you and I both just have deep connections to these guys. We, we love Yacht Club and all the work they were doing, and uh, it just seemed right, you know, for to bring you here and showcase what what they brought to the table. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm always happy to to support these guys. Like from the very beginning, I was as a, a huge supporter. I was a backer of the first Shovel Knight. Uh, um, Kickstarter, and uh, you know, we played the original demo on Game Grumps, and yeah. that was like it, I've just been a huge. Yeah, fan. and you guys also shot the commercial the, the, for right. the Amiibo. Yeah, the, yeah, well, both Amiibo. Yeah, oh, and right. we yeah. we did um, the Amiibo three pack one. I'm particularly fond of <laughs> just, just for how sensual it was. <laughs> it's very exciting. very arousing. Yes. I didn't know a, a oh yeah, plastic figures would be that arousing. <laughs> yeah, well, you even with, backed the Kickstarter a few min minutes ago, right? No, that's yeah. right. I, I, I'm like I'm You've like backer number twelve. Us. I wasn't even fast <laughs> enough. Yeah, you guys were making you were getting uh, backers so quickly that even me who was like you were like it's live. <laughs> like, I, I wasn't fast enough to be the first backer. So. My app crashed when I was trying to back it wow. in real time. <laughs> yeah, that's because all of our parents and grandparents, all the yacht club like relatives, are in there just trying to make us look good. <laughs> <Yeah>. Five dollars. <laughs> Save a director for a day slot for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just make you guys cookies while you're doing your thing. <laughs> I, I want that now. <laughs> uh, with that said, we're about to dive right back into uh, the, the script dungeon. For those of you at home, please, please, please be sure if you want to ask us a question, type exclamation point Q, and in the next block, we're going to go ahead and answer your questions. With that said, let's get back to the gameplay. Yeah, of course. So exciting. This is where this is where we just left off, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly where we just left off. Excellent. So real quick, before we dive into the dungeon proper, I'm going to go into my under lab here, which is where you're going to be equipping new items and revisiting throughout your adventure. So, so that's every time there's a little thing right there, it's, it's your yeah. under lab? Every time you see one of those, you might want to take a visit real quick. That's there's all sorts cool. of stuff in here. It's where you'll change weapons and uh, who knows, maybe some characters will even pop up. Well, so, oh, you got a tube amp going on here? Even a tube amp. <laughs> Hey, yeah, what, when you're what is this? You're super Mia. hipster yeah. right now. This is a machine to convert your bone stone, one of the currencies of the game, into raw bones Whoa. that you can use for leveling up or spending Whoa. items or whatever you want. Yeah. So you collect bone stones throughout the game. Bones. You can uh, find them throughout the world. And you can also choose to turn bones that you've picked up, so currency that you've collected as you play, into a permanent uh, consumable that you can use in the future. So you don't have to worry about you know losing your precious bone uh, your precious bones. You can turn them into a bone stone and then convert them back into bones in the future when you go back to your under lab and then spend them on things that you might be saving for. That's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, man, I'm just stoked about this, man. Well, it's it's it's. It's it's a little unfortunate that I've been able to hang out with you guys today for for several hours because you know I've seen a little bit of it now and I've 
we've, we've had all these conversations <laughs> right. where I was like, oh, what about this? And stuff, and you guys have very succinctly answered, and now that we're live, I'm like, um, you gotta like, no, I already asked that. Right. <laughs> Maybe I should ask that again. No, ask it again if you remember. Bring your excitement back to the surface. No, yeah. I mean, the, the, the so, it's so dope looking. I mean, we were just talking about, uh, just before, um, just like the graphical, uh, how you're trying to match the Game Boy Color era of, yeah. of graphics. Did you guys talk about that on the, pre the previous segment? We did, oh, we did. Bit. Yeah, we talked about like, uh, you know, tile set restrictions and things like that. Um, but you know, as we said before, the portable games in general, but in particular the Game Boy, is just so near and dear to our hearts. And uh, just like Shovel Knight was a love letter to NES games, uh, this is a love letter to Game Boy. Well, you were telling me earlier how, how difficult it is to integrate like a jump into this into this type of gameplay. Um, <laughs> I was asking you yeah. earlier, like, what other what other frame of references did you have for a game like this that has a jump? There are like really no 2D top, like I don't want to like shoot myself in the foot saying this, but <laughs> in doing our research, we found very few uh, games that had 2D top-down platforming where you're like able to jump all the time without the use of a special weapon or like uh, the game putting you on a rail, right? When you're jumping off mm -hmm. a specific ledge or something like that. So there are games like Link's Awakening when you have the Rock's Feather. Right. Uh, there's a game called Gremlin's uh, New Batch, which uh, is an NES game that I actually, <laughs> I, we, we are fans of. You guys are, you guys are <laughs> telling me that you got inspired by Gremlin's The New Batch? New Batch is awesome. <laughs> More people should be playing that. Come on, the movie as well. That's a great movie. Is this, is this just a blatant ripoff of, of Gremlin's New Batch? New Batch? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. We just like a WB Gremlins logo in the corner this whole time. <laughs> guys, welcome to the Gremlin's 2 block <laughs> of Meaning of the Hollow Earth. So how much, was there any stuff from those games where you were like, oh, that's really interesting? Uh, yeah, I mean, Alec, do you want to speak to that? Because a lot right. of it is just realizing that, wow, there is so much fertile ground to make a new type of game in a top-down kind of context. Yeah. And so more than any specific thing we're taking from one game, we're sort of having a lot of fun just uh, exploring and seeing what kinds of stuff we can do on our own. Well, I mean, that seems like a core element, right? Like. Was that the intention from the beginning to make a game like this where you're jumping? Uh, Definitely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think that all starts with like, what are the core actions of the game going to be, and how can they be uh, something that can be extended to provide fun throughout the entirety of the game, and also make sense and seem cool and actiony and fun for players. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, it seems like a huge undertaking. Like it almost seems to me. We were talking about this earlier. How like um, uh, a link between worlds. It, it, it's almost like they forewent jumping for the wall mechanic because like it's right. just so challenging to design this kind of It definitely, gameplay. yes, totally. it definitely feels at times like we're reinventing the wheel a little bit um, just because we're working in like this, you know, 2D, 2D dimension but trying to do what is generally considered or uh, uh, left to 3D gameplay, you know, like jumping and platforming like this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so far so good, hopefully. I mean, <laughs> we, we think the game's a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully you all will too. So I'm, I've been getting a lot of feedback online about, uh, you know, hey, Yacht Club, they made Shovel Knight, they, they published uh, Cyber Shadow, uh, you guys have Dig and, and now Dungeon Out, or Pocket Dungeon Out now. Um, why Kickstarter? And uh, I know the obvious answer is because video games take millions of dollars to make <laughs> because you have several people working on it at once. Um, but I think Alec, in in in, their, in the direct, you kind of uh, you kind of really emphasize that this is more or less about the community at large understanding the game and 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 being rewarded. So so what's the what's your guys' approach to Kickstarter this time around, and and what makes it different? If if you can answer that. I mean, it's no secret that we're not in such dire straits as the first time that we would need the funding to complete the project. Um, however, I think there's still a ton of value in making a Kickstarter campaign and getting other fans and stuff. Um, involved in the creation of the game from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, we like that it enables us to uh, have contributors to the game, right? Uh, if you go to the Kickstarter, you can purchase a director for a day slot. You can, um, you can present new ideas for us uh, to potentially implement in the game. And I think that's just a way more fun development environment than toiling away on something kind of on our own and in secret. Until it comes out. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we were like ti we were tired of working on this game in secret and just wanted to get it out in the open and share the development process with the community. We built such a strong community uh, for Shovel Knight on Kickstarter, and I mean through Kickstarter, that's where characters that are like you know iconic uh, staples from the original games, like Phantom Striker, the Baz, uh, Mr. Hat, like all these characters were made through the director for a day. 
uh, uh, tiers from the first campaign. And so we look, are looking to, to do that again with a new community, a Mina, Mina the Hollower community, and just share in the whole development experience and process with uh, all of our fans and hopefully future fans. I was so upset that I missed that, that the, the, the creative boss thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, no! <laughs> what have I done? Round this two. This game's brilliant! Yeah. <laughs> you, you, just, you just booked for round two. That's we're right. Like, that's so right. excited to work with you. I am very excited to, to be on a Skype call with y'all. <laughs> you'll, you'll be in the office with us. I'm like, oh, hell. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we also heard so many requests for similar things, right? And so we wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to involve our fans, uh, just like last time with Shulman. Oh, even, even just the like getting the portrait in the, in the gallery. Like walking up there and like seeing my face, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> Isn't it like your game grumps yeah, face? Yeah, it's the game grumps like face. The yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have to tell you guys, the, the the control room just informed me that so far, uh, you guys have raised over seventy five thousand dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Amazing! Wow! Woo! They, they guys, they haven't known, they haven't looked at the Kickstarter yeah. results. So they, they've just been here in the studio with us. Um, but also, uh, all of the creative uh, director. For a day slots are gone. Oh, wow. They're all gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad I got yeah. in early. Yeah. Wow. I, I also got in early. <laughs> so All right, we've uh, got a lot of work to do. We, yeah. have to, we have to finish the game now. <laughs> Sorry, Thank Mom. you, everybody, for all of your support. That's we're blown away. We're Thank basically so just much. gonna design the game for you. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, Let us tell you how to make the game, that okay? That is the idea. <laughs> you paid for that That's the real impetus of the Kickstarter. Right. Yeah. We don't need the money, we need we the manpower. Need, we don't want to do the work, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible, dude. Congratulations. That's so, that's like, it's hard to actually take that all in right now, so. We're here <laughs> one step at a time. But <laughs> hopefully you're all enjoying the demo as we uh, make our way through the crypt here. So uh, I, I hope I'm not repeating what was... Um, no, repeat it, man. The people earlier. are coming and going all the time, so yeah. don't even okay. worry about it. So I'm, I'm curious. We, we were talking about jumping. There's also the like ground element. Yeah. So totally. was that like something that you came up with later, or was it also part of the core? That was part of like how do we make the jumping more than just a jump and give it nuance that's available for um, all sorts of gameplay fun outside of just platforming, right? Right. If it's something that you can use to dodge enemies, or if you burrow underneath items and pick them up, then suddenly we have a mechanic that can be extended and. Okay you know, hundreds of ways, and we can make a whole game about it. <laughs> so brilliant. It, remi it reminds me of uh, Astro Superstars. It's like an old arcade fighting game yeah. where you were like in the air, and you know, you usually jump, but you can also jump down as well. So it's 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 interesting though, because like that that game just was a jump, but in this, the, the actual burrowing is like a completely different feel. It's a completely different um, mechanic entirely of like what it can do, what it's capable of doing. Speaking of fun, weird new mechanics, uh, there's one that I want to highlight real quick. Uh, if you notice, go. when I attack enemies, I build this yellow meter on my health bar at the bottom, right? Okay. And so the way that that works is as you uh, defeat enemies, that meter will grow, but that's not real health yet. In order to actually turn it into health, you gotta swig one of these uh, vials real quick. Plasma so vial. you gotta be aggressive to generate your healing resource, but you gotta play defensively to actually be able to use it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I love I love this Mario 2-esque, like, the thing is coming to get you because you picked it up. It's <laughs> yeah. so brilliant. Man, that's a great risk-reward system. I, I really loved stuff like that. So like Blazing Star had a like a similar yep. situation. Where, yep. Yeah. Ooh. So amazing. Yeah, Bloodborne uh, Blood Vials work in a somewhat similar way where you know the game just kind of incentivizes you to be aggressive and keep attacking mm -hmm. enemies once they've taken your health. Oh yeah, Bloodborne. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's literally vials. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that is true. I also just have been informed that you guys already have over a thousand backers. Hey. Wow. So you guys are you guys are flying through this. Goodness it's pretty great, great stuff. <laughs> not, <laughs> not bad, not bad for a, for a game that just became public about 20, 30 minutes ago. Right. So, congratulations we, to you We guys. had, well, honestly, we had, having, had and have no idea what to expect, and it was just like, you know, working in a bubble for so long, it was really hard to know what the reception would be. So, this is extremely flattering, and we're so thankful and grateful for all of your support, everybody. I'm gonna go back into the under lab real quick. Okay. So I noticed you got full. I saw, you got full health when you entered the under lab. Is that like a, a like a strategy? If someone's low in health, they can go back and, and refill, or yeah, you can go back to your last checkpoint and try to try a little bit of a redo. If yeah. Things go sour. Does it refresh the stage at all? Yeah, it'll respawn all the enemies okay. and everything. Yeah. 
So I equip the Bridge Weaver, which is a little there. spider buddy that can help me cross Whoa. the pits <laughs> for a limited amount of I time. I love the little. <laughs> <laughs> the I love the cute out. little spider little guy that shows up. It out. Yeah, but He's he your can't buddy. go that far. <laughs> Shouldn't be spitting it out of its butt. You know, <laughs> um, actually, you don't want to be lewd about it, right? It's like, come on. Um, yeah, so trinkets, which you'll be able to pick up uh, in secret areas or as rewards for you know helping out NPCs, uh, various points throughout the game. Trinkets will augment your play style. We've got a ton of trinkets that all just do ridiculous things like everything from you know just raising your attack power or defense like one point or something sure. like that to something like uh, the, the spider here that's you know allowing you to play in a completely different yeah, way like it, skipping pits that normally would kill you it also yeah it also saves you like that Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can't like keep jumping that way though, right? No, it's, it's like a, a limited time use kind of thing. Very intentionally limited. It's a gotcha. walkout too. You can't just jump into a pit either. Yeah. The spider's awesome. gotta like weave the web right in front. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have to take a quick break. So we're gonna take a we're gonna pause right now. This has been amazing. I'm I'm so stoked for you guys. <laughs> nope. Uh when we come back, Sandy and Alec will be here answering your questions. Aaron and I will be here to hang out to talk about everything announced so far. So go ahead, get your questions in right now by typing exclamation point and then Q and then your question. And we might answer it after the break. Enjoy Gex. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more X Play. Yeah. Woo! All right, welcome back to X-Play, everyone. Now, uh, before uh, we get back to gameplay and everything, uh, I've been asking you guys at home to please send us your questions, our loyal audience. You've all been sending us questions, and we've got answers, hopefully. Uh, and no, Gex will not be answering questions about her skincare routine. She's Aww. a lizard. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but if you want to be as beautifully as scaly as her, you simply have to be blessed by our Lord and Savior of Gex, God, and Mantha. Here we go. Let's dive right back to the gameplay, and let's get more to some of these questions. Here we go. Uh, you guys ready to answer some questions? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Um, so, previously, Yacht Club has been supportive wait, of wait, the Wait, you gotta show. say the name. What the <laughs> I don't name? even know if those were the... Sam and Buffalo. Is it Sam and Buffalo? <laughs> Come on. You got it. Sam and Buffalo. Uh, previously, <laughs> Yacht Club has been pretty supportive of the Shovel Knight speedrunning community. Are there any features you guys have been working on to implement to help foster a speedrunning community around Mina? Totally. Um, I mean, with all of our games, we make sure to take a pass towards the end to improve like the the, the fun of the game in a speedrunning context. That's interesting. Um, like it's baked into our DNA that much, right? It's speedrunning. We don't really see as like a happy accident, but rather like a feature <laughs> of so, the so game that we work have, on. Things have changed as a result of totally. Well, like oh, maybe this we'll move moving better. platforms around so that they're like on on sync with the timer. If you're like blazing through the game, wow, um, that's we'll, cool. we'll make special little considerations for like, well, if you're going this fast, maybe you should like be able to skip the sequence that oh, normally. So play. like a moving platform, you would be like, okay, if we time it like this, then like if somebody's blazing in from, they could make the jump. Exactly. exactly. That's yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, the, we had QA testing this demo before we brought it here, and they were showing us a bunch of things that they thought maybe were bugs. Like, is this is this an intended route? It seems a little bit like you're skipping content. And we're like, leave it in. Leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. If you can do that, that's cool. Uh, we have another question from uh, Ancient uh, Flounder. For physical releases, what are the preliminary plans? <laughs> Why are they all fish? <laughs> they're all fish, they're all fish. <laughs> I don't know. This is crazy. Uh, for her physical release, uh, what are their preliminary plans? Full retail launch, maybe only a limited run games type of release and see from there. Do you guys know what your plan is for? Uh, we're not totally ready to talk about those sorts of details, but rest assured, we're very much interested yep. in making physical copies of the game. As uh, a Kickstarter reward tier, you can even elect to get that yourself. Yep, you can go right now to the Kickstarter, minathehollower.com and back for the physical reward tier, or any, any tier, but that, that includes a physical game. Yeah. So it's in the works. Uh, I can't read that name. Sporo... Fight? Fight? Sporo Fight? Yeah. Uh, is the game structure level based on more Zelda-ish in having a world to explore? Oh, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Is structure level based more or less on Zelda with the world having to explore? So sort we're trying nice. we're trying a lot of new stuff in that regard. Structurally, there will be elements that feel more open like Zelda, but there will also be more linear focused uh, challenges and dungeons that uh, that still reward that exploration, but in slightly different ways. So we're trying to kind of get a, a best of both worlds situation. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> from when you start the game, the island is going to be pretty open to explore. I mean, we're, we're planning some gated areas too, but 
as you progress through the game, more and more of it will open, and you'll have a lot of choice as to where you want to go. You know, do you want to explore this cool wintry area, or would you rather go to the you know the swamplands or something like that? Yeah, we're interested in uh, pursuing like the best parts of of each approach to that sort of thing, right? Like, it's really cool in Zelda 1 how you can go tackle pretty much any of the dungeons whenever you want, right? Yep. But it's a little less cool when you're totally lost and you don't know where to go, right? <laughs> right. So you don't have your gigantic paper map that you have to take a marker and highlight where you've been going. Your right. game fact. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dave and Allen asks, when making 2D games, are you using your own engine modified or otherwise? So yeah. this game we're actually making with our brand spanking new yep. own internal in-house game engine. Um, but really, if this is more of a question for aspiring game dev type things, then make whatever you want with whatever you want. Before <laughs> uh, we were really working on this game as a team, as a project, I made it as a prototype in a completely different game engine. So. You know, whatever gets the job done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, Mina the Hollower, like this iteration that we're playing, has been built from the ground up in our own custom engine. So, that's awesome. Yep, yep, we got full control and can do whatever we want. That probably comes with some <laughs> challenges too, right? Like yeah. something breaks, you're like, uh oh. Yeah, it turns out making a game engine. <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Just a, a whole lot of work. I'm curious. Um, the, the the last question about like level design is: Is there like a world map? No, there's not a world map as of now, uh, but we have no plans to to add one. We're trying to make the it's just fully contiguous. Yep, f yep. Um, you don't want people opening up menus to look at where they are. We want the world to feel intuitive. Uh, you know, loop the player around in a way that makes sense. Uh, you don't feel lost, but you also feel like you have some control over where you're going and. Uh, and uh, yeah, right now we're trying to see how far we can get without making people pause the game and open a map all the time. Right. Yeah. By making that, the yeah. areas intuitive and linked together in smart ways. Yep. Uh, Rafael Gonzalez asks, what's your brainstorming process when it comes to coming up with a brand new game like this? <laughs> a, a whole lot of meetings. <laughs> we, I mean, yeah, uh, about two years ago when we first started talks about what game we wanted to make next, I mean, we knew we didn't want to do another Shovel Knight game at the moment, uh, at least internally, right? And we were like, well, what could it be? It could be so many different things. We even had a, an online poll, you know, trying to see what our fans were really? interested in, in having us do, yeah. We talked about that right before the break. Yeah. Remember? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was definitely, definitely here, here today when that happened. <laughs> For the totally real thing that you saw yeah. when you were in studio filming with uh -huh. us. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like we mentioned before, it's just a whole lot of, you know, what we all would like to bring to the table and, and work on uh, as, a, as a team. And this is just a whole collaborative effort and mesh of all of our favorite things. Lurch Skywalker asked, would you guys consider adding a challenge dun dun uh, dungeon similar to that of the Chalice Dungeons in Bloodborne? That would be cool. Yes, I mean, these two guys are huge Bloodborne fans, so <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure that you guys have thought about it. We, we, we were playing Bloodborne PSX today. Like, we're, yeah, we're huge Bloodborne oh, fans. Yes, amazing. Yeah. we just talk about that for a while? I know, we were just geeking out on that. Yeah, I know, something like that would be really cool. Uh, we're, you know, as I said, uh, as we all said before, the Kickstarter is really our chance to work with all of you and ha get your input on the game, be part of the development process, join us in live streams uh, as we're making the, the game and talking about things like this. Like, we'll probably be on a design live stream at some point and be like, hey, we do want to add something like Chalice Dungeons, but what should it be like, you know? And then that's your chance to come in and, and talk with us and help us design it. Who's this sweet child with you? That's the Duke. <laughs> The Duke. Yeah, so in this dungeon, you can find uh, an NPC job. that asks you to help him by taking him towards the end of it. So I've elected to help him out. Is he like a not statue boy? boy or? He's just a scaredy yeah, boy. He's, he's, he's a scaredy, a scaredy cat. boy. He's a guy. <laughs> uh, stuff, stuff a bab. I can't read that well. I'm so sorry. It's too far stuff away. Stuff ABC. Stuff ABC. Uh, ask, will the game have any kind of special edition when it comes out, like a limited edition or collector's edition, anything like that? That's a great question. Uh, we don't have any plans for anything specific right now, but once we do, we'll definitely let all of you know. And something like that doesn't seem out of the question for sure. Will it come with dirt? <laughs> I mean, as, I think, as you can tell. I think we joked about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, when, when you guys, so I didn't know you guys before the Kickstarter. I found out because like some of the guys at Yacht Club were fans of mine and vice versa. Yep. Oh, whoa, you guys cost 100,000. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And still climbing! <laughs> and still climbing. 
Congratulations. That's awesome. Has it, has it even been an hour? No, it hasn't. It's almost an hour. That's that's exciting stuff. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, is, is that the playoff music? Are we wrapping up? Is that what I'm getting at right now? Am I, no? Okay. I just wanted to bring that up. Great. Right at the <laughs> It sounded like, that's all the time we've got. No, we're good. Um, uh, but yeah, actually, since we're already here taking a quick break, I'm going to ask another question. Um, this one's not about, I mean, it's about Shovel Knight. Uh, Metazuma1 asked, did Sakurai approach the team or how did Shovel Knight get into the Smash Bros. universe with the assist trophy? <laughs> I mean, we're not super allowed to talk about the yeah, nitty gritty sure. details of we're how sworn to secrecy sort of thing comes to fruition. <laughs> it's bribery. So, <laughs> yeah, Sakurai would literally like drop down from the ceiling and sli like slit our throats if we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <at least> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm totally Can you talk about it? I really want to meet him. <laughs> no. How do, it's like a like, do we just say it and he shows up? Is that uh, how it works? I mean, yeah. You just summon him from the ether. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Rich Rich Diaz says, "Will there be a lot of collectibles in Mina the Hollower?" Absolutely. In the I game, mean, yes. already you saw that trinket menu had a zero out of sixty on it, right? We're <laughs> playing so in. Many. <laughs> We're There's playing in. There's too really many collectibles. Yes. Yeah. Do they all do things, or is it just yes? Like that's awesome. They all do things. They're all really cool. I have, like. There are more of them in the in the full game. We haven't brought them all to the demo, but uh, that's like one of the things I'm most excited about is the the variety of collectibles and 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 things that augment your play style it's just love that yeah i'm so excited so to cool. see people play this uh retro Poyo asks are we able to play this game in four by three i really want to play this <laughs> on my crt tv <laughs> so if cool. you stretch the image and squish it down you totally could but, <laughs> but if you looked all the level design every room is intended for a widescreen yeah. display so it's yeah. it's not exactly it would just look, we can turn on it would just look really weird and unfortunate yeah. Widescreen awesome. CRT. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is there's not going to be an actual Game Boy Color release of this. You know, if somebody wants to figure that I'm out. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> someone, someone's <laughs> already looking at this going, how do I do uh, this? Yes. <laughs> I hope so. All right, we got one last question. This one's from, uh, let's see, is it Tanosopolum? Tanosopolum? I can read you guys. What game would you want Mina to make a cameo in first? Oh, already, ask, already asking the cameo question out the gate. I don't know. Should we do a bunch of cameos for Mina? <laughs> I mean, gotta, we got we to gotta consult Shovel Knight on that one. He's yeah. the expert, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question, but uh, time the next will Next Soulsborne game. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Bloodborne 2. <laughs> yeah. Put, put Mina's weapon in the game. Yeah. Right. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone for all your questions. Uh, now that you all know all the secrets, please keep them between all of us here. I'm trusting you at home <laughs> to keep all this under wrap. But hey, that's it for today's X Play. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you um, to Michael Berdy, uh, my producer in the sky, who designed and helped me create the direct. Yeah. 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 Woo, Berdy! Um, uh, I, I want to say thank you to Celia and to everyone at Yacht Club Games who've been working with us in tandem. We've been playing this for a while, and uh, it's just been a really wonderful thing to share this all with you guys. I want to say thank you to Aaron for being our awesome guest. Hey, oh, Aaron! Thanks for having me. Woo! Yeah. It's great. <laughs> and of course, a big thank you to all of you at home who've been watching and supporting this. Please uh, enjoy Mina the Holler when it comes out. Guys, thank you for being here once again. One thank more round you, of applause everybody. for the Hollower. Thank you to Sandy and Alex for joining Alex for us today. That's Mina it. Yes, please, 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 if you want to support, head to meanofthehollower.com right now on Kickstarter. Support it today. That's been X Play. I'm Gerard the Completionist. See you later, gamers. Have a good one. Woo!